Hi, this is Bart Polson. This video is for an exercise in Zed Shaw's book, Learn Python the Hard Way. If you go to his website, learnpythonthehardway.org, and click on Read the Free HTML Online, that'll take you to the table of contents, which now looks different. We're going to scroll down to Exercise 32, which is called Loops and Lists. Click on that. It takes you here. And you're going to find out that especially my purposes in working with Python are to be able to work with data. And so loops and lists are immensely useful. Now we've got a funny bunch of code here that I am going to put into Text Wrangler along with a lot of commenting. And I'm going to run through uh, things in one or two different ways. So this will take a minute. But I'm going to go to Text Wrangler here. And here's what we've got. The first thing is we're going to create three lists. That's collections of data. The first one is going to go into a variable called the underscore count. And then we use equals because it's an assignment operator because we're filling in the values into a variable. And then square brackets. That indicates that you're going to have a list. And then you put each item in the list with a comma in between. So we have one comma, two comma, three comma, so on. Uh, by the way, the square brackets are important because you'll find that uh, parentheses, square brackets, and curly brackets or braces all have different functions. And there have been times when I, you know, things just didn't work in internet it's because I used the wrong kind of bracket at, at one point. Anyhow, square brackets for lists. So we have one called the count, and it's got the numbers one through five. Then we have another one called fruits. So that's a variable there. And it's going to hold the list and it equals for the assignment. And then in the square brackets, we have in single quotes, uh, remember, because we're putting in strings at this point, we have the names of four fruits, apples, oranges, pears, and apricots. Great. And then we have a third list that's going to go into a list variable here called change equals. And then we're going to put, um, this is interesting because we're doing different data types. A lot of other programs would not let you do this. They would want the list to be all of the same data type, but Python's more flexible this way. So we have the number one, and then we have in uh, single quotes, pennies, then two, dimes, three, and quarters. Great. Uh, just a quick note here. In Python, these are called lists, although in many other languages, the ones I'm familiar with, they call them arrays, uh, A-R-R-A-Y-S, but they're the same thing. Anyhow, so those are our three lists. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create what's called a for loop, and that's a a little block of code that's going to step through each item in the array one at a time and do something with it. And it's a way of making your code a lot shorter if you have a repetitive function. So the first kind of for loop goes through a list and here's what it looks like. It's a pretty simple structure. Like we did with uh, when we created functions and we had def and, and, and we had an if loop, what you do first is you type for, and that actually tells Python what kind that you're going to be doing a for loop here. And then for, and then you have a variable here, which at this point we're calling number, though you can call it anything you want. And then n, this is where you're going to specify the list that you're pulling from, the count. So for each item in the list that's called the count, and then we, we finish with a colon here, and then you indent so it knows it all goes in the same block. Now, um, the variable name here, number, that's a variable that's used temporarily for keeping track of which item it's working on in the, in the list. You can use anything you want. Right now we're using number, although it turns out that the most common is actually a lowercase i. Think of it as for integer or index. Actually, index is better. And you'll see an example that uses that in a couple minutes. Anyhow, any number you like. And then we're going to do one function for each thing here. We're going to say print to the console. This is count, and then we have this little format uh, placeholder thingy, and that's going to, and we're going to fill in the number. So, what we're going to do is the number is the variable we defined right here. If we called it i, we would just put i right here. If we called it uh, step in array or whatever, we would just put that same thing right here. And then it's going to go through this one at a time. Okay. Next, we're going to do a similar thing for fruits. Uh, here we, we're you notice, by the way, we've de-dented. We've gone back to the uh, margin, so Python knows we're done with the previous command block. Four, so it knows we're going to do a loop. And then this is our little uh, variable to keep track of the index numbers as we go through. This one's being called fruit. And the list is called fruits. And you notice they're similar names, but they're not identical. Identical would cause a problem. But it's OK. 
and it's going to print out a fruit of type colon, and then it's going to use S here because it's a string. And then it's going to pull it from fruit, which we defined right here, which in turn pulls from fruits, which is defined right up here. Okay, so it's again, it's kind of cascading through. Then after that, we're going to use a mixed list. And in the first one, we used the percent D, which means we were going to use digits. And the next one, we used percent S, which meant we were going to use strings. Now, because this last uh, example here, change has both numerical data and string data, we can't use that. But we can use a generic uh, command. We could just use R for representation or raw data, if you want. And so for this one, we're going to put for i in change. And this is the way it will normally be structured. i is the most common index variable. So for i in change, and change again is the name of this list variable, print this. Print i got, and then percent r, whatever is there, for i, where i is the item or index in the change. Okay, a few other things to mention. You can also build lists from the command line. You create an empty one by saying we have your elements and then we have the square brackets to indicate that it's a list, but there's nothing in it. So it knows you create an empty list. And then we can use these functions to fill it in. I got a lot of comments here. We're going to be using this for i. And, and instead of specifying an existing uh, list, we're going to use a function that says range 0 to 6. Now you need to know how range works. Range uh, is a way of pulling out a sequence of, of integers. And it starts at the first number, so that's an inclusive. So it's going to start at zero. Then it's going to stop at one less than the second. That's an exclusive limit. So it's going to go zero, one, two, three, four, five. It's not going to do six. There will be six items in the list, but because it starts at zero, it'll, it'll go zero, one, two, three, four, five, and not include the number six. Um, I know it's a little weird, but this is how items and lists are numbered. If you, they, each item has an index number, and the first one is zero. You got to learn how to count from zero. Um, an interesting thing for range is that zero is a default starting point, so you don't actually have to do range zero to six. You can just write it like this: range six, and it knows to start at zero, go zero, one, two, three, four, five. You can also specify whether the range counts up or counts down, and whether it skips, you know, like does every second number or every tenth number or whatever. But we're not going to do that. And then here is the command we use: add excuse me, print adding this digit to the list. And then the i, again, that comes from here, means each uh, index number or item in the range. And that adds them. And then we use this function right here. We use a built-in function called append. Now, elements is the name of our empty list. And so we say, and that's an object. You say, take this elements, you know, call it a variable, call it an object. And then the dot operator means we're going to apply a function or a method to that. And we're going to use a built-in method or function called append, which means add this thing that we just defined onto the array, excuse me, onto the list. Sorry, I'm used to talking about arrays. And then we can print them out. And we can use this for i in elements. So it's going to go through this um, list elements, print element was ding dong ding. And now, I just want you to know that there's another way to write this. It's a little faster. You can actually do it like this. You can just type elements, and I created a new one called elements2, equals range 0 to 6. And then you don't have to do this uh, append thing. It'll just stick it in there, which means it's very easy to create these um, lists in Python. You just say elements equal elements2 equals range 6, and then print it, and it'll spit it all out. Anyhow, that is the code. So let's come over here. And I'm going to type in Python, then ex32.py, so we can run that. And it's going to spit out a whole lot of stuff. Let me make that bigger. This is the count, one, two, three. That is this line right here that's being executed. And it's referring back to this list. So this is the count is running through that one at a time. And you see it's done at one, two, three, four, five, even though we only had to write it once within the loop. That's the power of loops. And now we're going to go through the next list, and it's in fruits, and it says print a fruit of type, and you see it's gone through one item at a time. Uh, please note, 
that it did not print the quotation marks. That's, that's kind of nice. So it didn't do that. And then we come to this one down to change, which is our mixed list. It includes numbers and strings. And that's when we use this percent %r for raw data or representation. And you'll see one difference is, whereas in this list with the fruits where we told it we were using strings, it did not print the quotes. But in the next one where we use r for representation or raw data, it did print the quotes because that actually was part of the item in it. And that's one of the reasons that r does not always behave necessarily the way that you think it's going to. Then we did this. We started creating an empty range, and then we have this function here where we're going to go through and add numbers. And you see here, we got this thing that says it adds 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then it prints them out also. And I want you to see that I'm also able to do it at the very end here with just a single fill in the array with one and print it with another. And there's the whole thing. It just it was easy to run through. Anyhow, that's lists, and that is four loops to go through them, and we're going to do that a million times. So it's something to get comfortable with. Hopefully that made sense, and I'll see you for the next exercise. Thanks.